he has spoken on the topics faith, family and freedom in Cuba, Belgium, Brazil, Congo, UK and all over the USA to crowds from 14 to 40,000. International Leadership Speaker, Trainer and Coach Author of Learn to Raw Leadership, Attitude Hack, Live a More Excellent Life, 5 Battle Strategies of a Victorious Warrior. 2021 President's Lifetime Achievement Award Recipient. Founding Partner of the John Maxwell Team. Toastmaster International Speech Competition Semi-Finalist. Founder of Tell It Like It Is TV, ThatGuyRocks.com and ThatGuySpeaks.com. Creator of Story Power TV, Transforming Grace TV, and Leading Leaders Podcast. Producer of four TV programs and podcasts for Liftable TV and World Trumpet Television as well as multiple social media channels. Please help me welcome J. Lauren Norris. You know, I've told people for years that um, 90% of the people who fail, fail for the same reason. Because they refuse to change. Because changing first means admitting... Well, you were wrong. If you're not willing to admit you're wrong, then you're not going to change. And if you're not going to change, then life is going to pass you by and you're going to find yourself like a rubber dinghy in the middle of high seas and it's not going to be a fun ride at all. And that's what I want to talk about in this episode of Leading Leaders. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. There have been a lot of seasons in my life that change came to me that, well, I wasn't planning on it. I didn't want it. I didn't like it when it came. I didn't like the way it came. Early on, my parents went through a divorce. Then my mom remarried. Not the best guy, in my opinion. Then he died in a car accident. And then I became the only man of the house at, like, 11. And for the rest of my life, I was the only son of a single mom. She never remarried. So all those things that a son might expect from his dad, all those lessons that a a young man might get from his father, I kind of got some of them in an awkward way from my uncles, but most of the ones that I would have expected to get as a kid, I just never got them. I didn't know I didn't get them. I just didn't get them. You you ever realize you, you don't know what you're missing until it's gone? Well, what if you never got it in the first place? Then you don't know that it's missing until, until you need it. See, what I've realized as a, an older man and as a father, and a father now who is a grandfather, which means I have sons and daughters who have kids of their own, and sometimes they complain to me about how I wasn't the best dad. And I can't argue the point. I mean, I wasn't the best dad. I get it. But I was a better dad than I had. I, I've been more present, more intentional, more focused. What I intend to offer my children, what, what I give them on purpose, is completely different than what I got. And part of that starts with the who that I chose to be. Now, I, again, I have to be honest and say, I, my son and I were just talking about it last night. He's 27 now. We were talking about the fact that He started reading some of the same kind of books that I read. Uh, The collection of books that I have right now, if I I just showed you the other, I can show you one camera angle, Uh, not that one, that one. That one gives you a pretty good idea. That's like one third of my library. And in that library, I started reading books. When I say started, I mean really digging into and devouring books in about... January of 2010. So it's only been about 15 years for me. The rest of my life up to that point, I was pretty much like everybody else. I was going through life. I was doing what I had to do. I'd, I'd read the books that I needed to read. I would study the things I had to study to pass the test, get the promotion, get the job, get the application turned in, whatever it was. But I wasn't a voracious reader. I wasn't a studier. I didn't go after things. I was just never taught to. In fact, my mother didn't go back to college. She was a high school dropout. She didn't go back to college until she was almost 50. 
She graduated from college at the same time she turned 50, the same month. I, that wasn't in me. That wasn't my inspiration. I, I was never taught, trained, or even thought that way. But when my son and I were reminiscing about that, and he said, you know, I'm not that far behind you. I said, no, actually, you're, you're way ahead of me at 27. It was almost another 10 years before I started reading the books that you're reading now. The, the library that you have access to now, I didn't have a clue existed. And trust me, Google wasn't a thing, or DuckDuckGo, or Bing, or whichever one you plan to, to research through. Trust me, there's a reason I collect old books now. Because there are things that I could have looked up and printed off in Google two years ago that would give you different answers today. There were laws and policies on the books, long-standing, 150 years of history, that today you can't find any evidence those laws ever existed. There are new laws made every day that change the way that we live our lives. There are economic policies changed every day. There are manipulations of political endeavors that are utilized through strategies that impact your health, your finances, your marital status, your home ownership, and basically the entire Bill of Rights. But rather than go at them politically because they know they'll lose in a voting block, they go at them financially. They go at them psychologically. They go at them emotionally. They use propaganda through various forms of media. They use arguments in the streets. Well, if you're not well read, if you haven't studied the books in their printed form, I have encyclopedias all the way back to 1968, and there are things you can read in those encyclopedias that were absolutely true. But you can't find them in any history books you're looking at now. Real events, real people, real stories, they're not there. See, all of these dynamics of change, the ebb and flows of time, the tides going in and going out in political realms, every time the balance of power shifts from one side to the other. It's an ebb and flow like an ocean. And the challenge that we have with young people today is that many of them, well, they've only known social media. That if, if you dropped them in, a, in the 1980s with the front porch and a rocking chair and said, have a conversation, they would look at you like you're from another planet. What kind of Neanderthal are you? Bunch of troglodytes? What do you mean you can't LOL? I heard someone say from the platform just this weekend, um, my son didn't want to wear his bicycle helmet because it would ruin his fit. His fit? You mean you can't get the same kind of exercise? I mean, you are talking about fitness, right? You're, you're going to get on the bicycle and, and, the, and ride for exercise, but you can't wear the helmet because it'll mess up your fitness? No, 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 not that kind of fit. Oh, 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 wait, so you're going to have a temper tantrum because you have to wear a helmet? What do you, what do you mean the helmet's going to ruin your fit? I, I, I don't get it. The outfit, bro. The outfit. Putting that helmet on clashes with the color of my shirt. It's going to ruin my outfit. I can't wear the helmet. It messes with my fit. What? Are we even speaking the same language? Is this English? Uh, Americanized English or something entirely different? And that's exactly what I mean when I say leaders who are not ready for change, leaders who are not strong enough to face the change when it comes, they, they'll often find themselves tossed around like a dinghy in high seas. If you've ever watched any of those video clips of the cargo ships, now think of a cargo ship, like the one that took out the bridge just recently, one that just over the weekend hit another bridge in Arkansas. But those container ships can sometimes be the size of four football fields, and 200, 300 thousand tons of merchandise on them. And they get out on these high seas where the waves are 40 and 50 feet high, and that gigantic ship is standing on its end and all the cargo sliding to one end. And then it goes over the wave and it comes back down the other side. Imagine your life. And a little rubber dinghy that would fit like 60 of them in one of those containers on a ship that has 900 containers on it. You're a tiny little speck in the middle of all that. And you know what doesn't care? The waves. Couldn't care less. 
whether it tosses you 20 feet or 200 feet in the air, whether it feeds you to a shark or puts you in the belly of a whale, the waves, the wind, the storm, the, we, the ocean, they, they don't care. They don't care about you at all. Change is coming. It's inevitable. How you prepare for it now, that's a whole different thing. You probably heard the old analogy of the lighthouse. You know, the, the guy in the Navy vessel is shape, making his way through the ocean and he sees a light off the bow and he says, Hey, uh, I see your light. I don't know who you are, but you, <laughs> you really ought to change course. And the light comes back and says, We're not changing course. He says, no, I don't think you understand. I'm Admiral so-and-so, and, and this is a Nimitz-class destroyer. We will blow you out of the water if you don't change course. We are on a collision course. You need to move. And the light comes back again and says, I'm not moving. And so the, the Admiral comes back one more time. He says, you don't understand. I'm, I'm not just leading this Nimitz-class destroyer. We have an entire battle crew behind us. We can wipe you out. They will never know you existed. You need to change course. And finally, the light comes back and says, no, sir, I'm a lighthouse. I'm not moving. You should change course, though, because it's going to get pretty rocky if you stay on the course you're on. See, as a parent, as a leader, the only ability we have to maintain leadership in a storm like that is to be the lighthouse, to be firmly planted on the rock of our, you ready for this? core values. Because what happens when you have a collision between an immovable object and an unstoppable force is something's going to break. But if you're the ship at sea and the only thing you can do is change course to avoid the collision, change is going to happen to you. And you may find yourself deeper out in the storm. But the leader who has core values that are deeply anchored that say, I know the waves are coming, but these are the things that no matter how much wave comes, I don't move. I have these core values that I will not abandon. My integrity, the people that I care about. I have a short list of those that I would sacrifice everything for. I know what matters most to me. I've already established those things. And if you have not already established those things, here's what's going to happen. Something's going to come along where it's a, the winds of change in politics or the winds of change in economic policy or the winds of change in social understandings or the winds of change in culture. And when those winds of change come to you without having core values that are deeply rooted and firmly established, that sea change, that wind of New culture is going to wash you away from where you are. The fibers of your character will be stretched to their maximum. We always fuss anybody in any form of leadership. And I don't care if you're the shift leader at the burger place and your primary job is french fries. There's a real good chance at some time or another you've had the notion in your mind well, that employee and that manager, they kind of have a thing going and that's like corruption because they get every shift that they want and I have to work the ones that I don't want to work every single time. It's like, it's like they've got something going on behind our backs. And so the idea of corruption doesn't start at the highest level of politics. It's at every level of leadership. Corruption, it's a thing. It's a thing that goes along with human nature. It's the thing that goes along with saying, I'm out of control. I, I can't change what's going on around me. I, I didn't choose these changes. I don't like these changes. I'm just stuck in them. Fair enough. It's pretty inevitable sometimes that, that change is going to come. In fact, it's always going to come. Change will always come. The question really is, what have you done to establish yourself with your core values? Because here's how change usually comes. Change usually happens over there first. We don't want to change internally. So we hold on to what we have, whether it's good or bad, whether it's right or wrong. That's another discussion. But we hold on to what we have and then change happens over there. And then someone somewhere in the change realizes you haven't changed yet. 
And for whatever reason, they want you to change, to go along with the flow, to agree with their social mores, to, uh, to get on board with this new cultural ideology, to, to fasten yourself to this new, I don't know, FTX or Bitcoin or whatever the thing is of the day, whether it's financial or political or social or economic structure. Is it capitalism or is it fascism? I don't know. I, I, I don't know, I don't, is it Marxism or is it socialism? I, 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 how many people couldn't even tell you the difference between them? Well, if you can't pull out an old encyclopedia from the 1960s, or better yet, the dictionary I have from the 1920s, and look up the word democracy, socialism, fascism, communism, chances are what you're hearing about those particular words today, which are change agent words, they will corrupt your culture. They will completely undermine everything you've been working on if, if you don't want, know what they are, if you don't know how to look out for them, how to buttress yourself against them, how to prepare yourself to resist them. They're going to change the who that you are and they're going to change your life because somebody's going to come along and say, the world is going this way, you, you ought to go with us. And if you're not a lighthouse on a big giant rock moored definitively to that space, when the tide changes, when the eclipse comes, I, I don't know if you've seen it or not, we are one week away from, and I am where, where this studio is located, we are in the path of totality, the, what they call darkness. I think it's going to be like three minutes of dead black at dead noon. That's kind of creepy. But a lot of t-shirts have been sold. Many water bottles have been sold. FEMA and other emergency management organizations Big top-level organizations have said, this could change the world. Your cell phone may be out for days. What? Because the moon went in front of the sun? It seems to me like that's happened before. Why is it a big issue now? I, there could be people with medical issues because of the moon passing in front of the sun. I mean, did a bunch of people die last time this happened? That was like seven years ago. I, I don't remember all the big news about it. But see, there's a, there's a whole lot of preemptive cultural change coming. It's pulling on us. It's pulling on our attention. It's pulling on the demands of our time and our resources and our energy. And for a lot of people, it's distracting enough that they'll lose sight of what they're supposed to be doing. They'll get drawn away by these other attractions and forget, oh, I have a job to do. I have people to tend to. I have, I have things that have to be done that if I don't do them, well, they don't get done at all. See, a strong leader has those core values that says, oh, well, I'm sure that is going to happen, and I'm sure there will be another earthquake and a tornado and a typhoon and a hurricane and a wildfire, because those tend to be the course of the existence on this planet. Uh, the real question is, need they impact me? Well, that's, believe it or not, a choice. It's a choice. Do I have to succumb to the social change struggles? Do I have to succumb to the cultural demands for change? Do I have to succumb to the economic demands for change or the political demands for change? And that's really about your leadership. If you have made your decision about what your core, devalu core values are, if you've already decided this is where I stand, good or bad, this is where I stand, rise or fall, this is where I stand in high tide and in low tide, when the winds are blowing and when, when the winds have stopped. When it's a cloudy sky or when it's raining. There was a guy once that said, you know what, keep this nonsense up and I'm just going to tell you it ain't going to rain for years. Keep messing with me. No rain for years. Finally, he said, okay, I'm going to release the rain. And everybody laughed. He said, I'm telling you, you need to bug out. It's about to rain like, like rain, like real rain, like rain you've never seen before. And when he told them that, they said, this dude's as crazy telling us there's going to be a whole lot of rain as he was when he told us there wasn't going to be any rain. But, oh yeah, he was right when he said there would be no rain. Now there's going to be a bunch of rain. Maybe we should listen to what he says. But they didn't leave fast enough. In fact, he outran them leaving because he knew there was about to be a lot of rain. And when the storms came, it washed away those people that well, they didn't have themselves well grounded. They hadn't made a firm decision. They didn't know where to stand. And so when the storm came, that was the end of them. I'm just telling you, it doesn't matter where you're at in leadership. If you're the French fry 
maven of the world, or your vice president, or a queen, or a prince, or a princess. Doesn't matter. Change is coming. And some of it will be change that you didn't plan, that you don't like, that you're not happy about, that you don't want, that you can't stop. You still have a choice. Will I be rooted and grounded where I am, or will I go with the change? It's a choice. There are some things that have stood the test of time. Some core values, some principles, some ideas that years, decades, centuries later are just as true as when they were declared. And change has been inevitable, but it has not impacted them. I suggest you do your own homework, you research, you get some old books and start reading and figure some things out that the internet isn't telling you. And then you find your own core values and you establish yourself well in those because when the lighthouse stands through the next storm, and the next storm. Oh, it may need some maintenance. It may need a new coat of paint. It may need some windows replaced. It may need to be shored up from time to time. But when the storm comes and all the dinghies are washed ashore, and the lighthouse is still standing, you're going to wish you were in the lighthouse and not in the rubber dinghy. You'll do that best as a leader by establishing your core values. Know what's important to you. Know what ideas and principles have stood the test of time and make them central to your life and decision making. Realize that corruption happens when change happens. It's usually the way they manipulate you into changing when it doesn't match your core values. And the fibers of your, beer, your bearing, your, the metal, the testing of who you are, of that's going to come in the times of change. As a leader, it's going to test your character from every direction. Who are you? What do you stand on? What do you believe? If you're not sure about that, drop me a line. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast or tell it like it is TV. Have a blessed day. Lauren is a master teacher on storytelling, and I learned so much. Um, I'm really gonna have to sit down and go back through everything, and I think I might have to have some more coffees with Lauren, but uh, it was totally worth my time, and I really highly recommend it if you're looking to grow your ministry, grow your business, uh, grow your career, uh, Lauren will serve you well. Thank you.